The final moments of Diablo 4 are filled with chaos and turmoil. Donan dies hugging a pillar, while Lorath Nar stands alone as the final Haradrim. The biggest mystery remains the face of Nirel, in possession of the Soul Stone and its terrifying resident, Mephisto, Lord of Hatred. She vanishes from sight, embarking on a solitary journey filled with mystery. From the frosty air of the fractured peaks to the vast expanse of the Twin Seas, Nirel's travels are far-reaching. The omnipresent Bloody Wolf, a chilling reminder of Mephisto's existence in the Soul Stone, continues to shadow her, adding an unnerving layer to her journey. The abrupt conclusion to Diablo 4 left me hungry for more. The puzzle pieces of the narrative were scattered, and I wanted to assemble the whole picture. So when I heard that the Book of Lorath, a lore compendium that Blizzard released alongside Diablo 4, provides the missing links in this intriguing chain of events, I knew I had to buy it. So the Book of Lorath picks up where Diablo 4 leaves off, offering a view into the lives of Nirel and Lorath post-events. The story unravels through a series of letters exchanged between the two. As Lorath chases Nirel's shadow across the world, she leaves a breadcrumb trail of letters for her mentor and friend. This video is sponsored by myself. If you like this video, give me a like. If you love it, a subscription would be awesome. Let's get started. The events of Diablo 4 leave Sanctuary scarred. The Cathedral of Light has initiated a crusade against the Haradrim, hounding Lorath to the ends of the earth. On top of all this, the Haradric Vault, a wellspring of generations of knowledge, has fallen prey to the clutches of Prava and her devout followers, potentially in hopes of finding clues on where the Soul Stone went. The book begins with Lorath, who has made his refuge in the confines of Firebreak Manor, once the family home to Donan. The manor serves as Lorath's sanctuary while he prepares his next move. He now shoulders an enormous task, to preserve priceless wisdom through the words he pens. As the last Haradrim, Lorath feels the duty to compile all his accrued knowledge into a single volume, the book that now rests in our hands, the Book of Lorath. His mission is to document a thorough classification of relics and cursed items scattered throughout Sanctuary, in a bid to protect the vital knowledge from fading into obscurity. Lorath's personal regret and guilt weave their way into his narrative, he lays bare his fears of being remembered only for his failures, of being mentioned in hushed tones akin to those reserved for the cursed. His inability to foresee the betrayal of Elias, his perceived weakness and his failure to save Donan gnaw at him. I'll be reading a few of these letters out during this video, and I apologize in advance for not having the same skill that the voice actor for Laura has. Here we go. It is possible that my name will be remembered in infamy, and I will be spoken of in whispers reserved for the damned. If that should be the case, I cannot object to it. Had I been more observant, had I been stronger, had I seen the betrayal to come, Donan might still be alive. Instead, I sit here in his study, surrounded by his possessions, writing this book. Despite the grim events, there's a glimmer of hope. The last reserve of Haradric knowledge is safeguarded within Lorath's mind. His writings are primarily intended for Nirel, as he documents the relics, cursed objects, and the lost knowledge of the Haradric Order, he nurtures a hope that these might be of assistance to her in her journey. From Firebreak Manor in Skosglen, Lorath makes his way south towards the Fractured Peaks reminiscing about the trails that led him to Skullsglen in the first place. To fight off the cold, Lorath wears his late friend Donan's fur cloak. After many days of travel, Lorath finds himself standing before his cabin nestled in the fractured peaks. The cabin where the events of Diablo IV started when a wanderer, that's you by the way, came looking for him. Within its familiar confines, he discovers an unexpected find. A letter from Nerel, 
hidden in an empty bottle of ale. A soft murmur of hope in the cold, lonely cabin. The letter has been left in anticipation of his return. In this letter, Nerelle's concern for her mentor is evident. She implores Lorath not to drown his troubles in ale, a haunting reminder of past habits. She absolves him of any guilt related to Elias and cautions him against the false peace that drink offers. Nerelle's knowledge of Lorath's possible journey, albeit cryptic, leads her to scatter letters along her path in the event their paths might overlap. Please don't be angry over Spilldale. I know you, and I won't have you turning to old habits. What happened with Elias was not your fault. You know that already. Drink won't make you believe it or forget what happened. Before I left, you hinted that you might be taking a journey of your own. In your typical stubborn way, you remained maddeningly cryptic about it. So I am going to leave letters like this along my way, just in case your road brings you to any of the same places. You might have been looking forward to some peace and quiet. Sorry to say, you're not going to be rid of me that easily, old man. Wherever you are going, please be watchful. Be careful. You've managed to make yourself a personal enemy to quite a few demons over the years, not to mention Prava and the Cathedral. It seems that their journey nearly crossed paths. We've seen the endgame cinematic, and we can tell that Nirel passed through Yelesna before heading to the Haradric Vault to leave her letter for Lorath. She then made her way south and made a stop at Lorath's cabin in case he was ever to come back. Lorath's journey evolves with the discovery of this letter. He still shoulders the responsibility of penning down the book, a work of knowledge in the world riddled with chaos. Now, an added purpose accompanies him, to trace Nirel through her letters, to find her and help her however he can. He decides to write a letter of his own and writes to Nirel about how her letter filled him with hope and also how she now owes him a good bottle of ale next time they see each other. Without a way to send this letter to her, he simply puts it in the empty bottle found in his cabin in the hope that she finds it one day. The journey forward promises to be as much a pursuit of knowledge as it is a quest for a cherished friend. Lorath makes his way from the fractured peaks to the swamps of Hawazar, where he records many relics such as Valtha's cauldron and Thaisa's ingredient pouch. He eventually makes his way through Hawazar by the skin of his teeth after fighting many snakemen which he dispatches with ease. As the sun rises over the edge of Hawazar, Lorath is happy to finally see the mountains of Kejistan, which lead him to Khaldum. Lorath's journey then leads him south to the Grass Docks, a port city still nursing the scars of the devastation from Mephisto's ascendance many centuries ago. Lorath hopes to cross the Twin Seas from here. Karast, despite the passage of time and its relative stability, is an upheaval once again. Violence has erupted like a plague. Old rivalries have been renewed. Neighbors slaughter neighbors over trivial slights. Hatred reigns. This wave of hatred can be attributed to the same corrupting force that had once haunted the port. Mephisto has been back here. Indeed, from the fractured peaks, Nirel had made her way down to Karast, looking for passage as we can see in the endgame cinematic which explains the current chaos of the city. As Lorath looks for a ship to traverse the sea, he meets a captain who recognizes him based on Nirel's description of him. The ship captain is the same one we see in the epilogue and he delivers a letter to Lorath from Nirel. In this letter, she discloses her struggle against Mephisto's influence. Nirel's narrative is filled with determination to silence the Lord of Hatred and preserve her sanity. Her words reveal a resilience fighting against the encroaching darkness. I should not have come to Karast. This was Mephisto's domain. Almost as soon as I arrived, his voice grew louder, more insistent. The Lord of Hatred laughs at humanity's insignificance. He mocks my weakness. He shows me the ruin that is to come. Sanctuary devoured. I fear the raging storm inside my head will drive me mad. Before coming here, 
I thought I was learning to ignore his voice and see through his visions. But I should have anticipated this. I was a fool. No doubt you would have tried to warn me if you were here. Perhaps I would have listened. I am leaving Karast as quickly as I can, and I will not repeat this mistake. I must seek some way of silencing the Lord of Hatred. I must find a way to keep my sanity. But don't worry, old man. I am not lost yet. It is here that Lorath begins to question Narelle's reliability as a narrator. Despite her belief in her control over the situation, the reality portrayed in Karas tells a different story. Narelle, burdened with the Soul Stone, has inadvertently become a vessel for hatred, her presence an instigator of chaos. The dissonance between her perception and the unfolding reality hints at the insidious reach of Mephisto's influence. After an absurd amount of gold was demanded, Lorath found passage on the same ship that took Narelle. Lorath was on his way to Aranok after a quick detour to the Scovos Isles. Unfortunately, not everything went as planned, and before reaching Temis, Ascari's ships forcefully convinced Lorath to turn back. Lorath wanted to exchange a relic for information, but it was not to be. The boat was now on its way to Aranok, the town of Lutgolain. Lorath's journey extends through Lutgolain, New Tristram, and finally leads him back to his former home in Westmarch. Here, he uses his father's blacksmithing skills to craft a shield with protective properties, which he infuses into this book through a special ritual. Lorath, unfortunately, finds no trace of Narelle in Westmarch, indicating that she had not ventured this far west. With Westmarch behind him, Lorath made a strenuous journey north through the Dreadlands, eventually reaching Ivgorod. His destination, the Floating Sky Monastery, the headquarters to the monks of Ivgorod, nestled within the Tavoi Mountains. The monks of these mountains are known for training their minds to withstand demonic influences, a clear struggle that Nirel is suffering with. Lorath arrives expecting to find Nirel, but discovers that she has moved on once more, spurred by a vision of Lorath crossing the Dreadlands. His only lead to Nirel is another letter left behind, in which she reveals that her time with the monks has helped her manage the voices and visions, indicating improvement in her condition. Nirel's account, as usual, carries a note of optimism. Hello there, old man. If you are reading this, then I might have become a seer since you last saw me. When I left the other letters for you, I thought there was maybe a chance you would find them. But up here, at the top of the world, not a chance at all. I had this dream, you see. I saw you walking east through miles and miles of ash. I figured that had to be the dreadlands, which meant you were heading this way. That's why I'm writing this letter. And it's also why I'm leaving. Don't be angry. Well, I know you probably will be angry. Please don't be hurt. I'm doing this to protect you. I was honestly planning to leave anyway. I've learned as much as I can from the monks here, and I think their techniques are helping me to ignore the voices and the visions. I am doing much better than I was. I also worry about staying too long in one place. It's better for me to be alone. And selfish of me to seek the company of others with the burden I carry. I don't know where I will go from here. I only know that I can't let anything happen to you. I've lost too much already. If you got hurt because of me, I think that would destroy me. Goodbye, old man. In contrast, the monks Lorath encounters in the monastery tell a different story. Narelle's affliction had grown so severe that many refused to approach her, opting to train her from a distance. A particular monk, whose voice shook with fear as he spoke, labelled her as an agent of pure chaos and hatred. Despite her obvious struggle against such a fate, the monk's fear led them to accommodate Narelle in a guest hut. Lorath, upon reading this letter, becomes concerned. He fears he might be losing Narelle to Mephisto, 
or worse, that she might already be lost, and that it is not Nerelle writing these letters. Her recent letter is the last trace he finds of her, leaving him with more questions than answers as he ventures on to Xansai. This is where the Book of Lorath leaves us. The trail of Nerelle ends abruptly, and Lorath finds himself at the precipice of a crucial decision. Completing his book, a task of immense historical significance, and finding Nerelle, his beloved student and friend. He simply cannot do both, apparently. The island of Xangsai now lies ahead of him, but Lorath is in turmoil. He is grappling with a profound internal conflict. Both pursuits, the book and Nerelle, are important to him, but the pressing demands of each task weigh heavily on his mind. After careful deliberation, Lorath makes a decision. He will finish the book first. His decision is informed by his hope that Nerel, more than anyone else, will benefit from reading his work. By documenting the shared history and knowledge they both possess, Lorath seeks to arm Nerel with the necessary information to cope with the Soul Stone's influence. With the decision made, Lorath channels his energy into the completion of his book. But the thought of Nerel does not leave him. He makes a solemn promise to find and help Nerel as soon as his work on the book is done. This task, he pledges, will be his next priority, even if it is the last thing he does. As soon as I am done with this island, I am coming to you. No matter where you are, I will find you and I will help you. If that is the last thing I do, my head will go to the Tree of Whispers wearing a smile. In this decision, Lorath exhibits his dedication to both his scholarly pursuits and his personal commitments, revealing a deep sense of responsibility towards both. This is also where we find out that all the relics Lorath has been collected on his journey up until now was to cast a protective spell over the book, to make sure only the right hands can open it and discover its knowledge. He's probably burnt after... Elias being able to read all the works of the Haradrim and coming to the wrong conclusions. Or were they the right conclusions? I'll let you tell me about that. After reading the book multiple times, I really like it. It provides us with a wealth of information about Sanctuary, while also giving us information about what happens after the cryptic ending of Diablo 4. We also see Narelle's condition worsening, and there is speculation that she might be succumbing to Mephisto's influence more rapidly than previous soulstone bearers, which means the next time we see her, she will probably be full-blown possessed. Despite these grim indications, Lorath maintains a firm and perhaps over-optimistic resolve to save Nerel, but not before he finishes his book, of course. So what do you think about all this? Should Lorath have been a little more protective of Nerel? Also, while I'm editing this, I'm realizing that in her last letter, she mentions not knowing where to go next. In the ending cinematic of Diablo 4, it seems like she's on a path, meaning she knows where she's going, and she's like taking a step forward to destroying Mephisto, or burying Mephisto, I don't know. Was the only reason why she left because she wanted Mephisto away from her friends as much as possible? Is this why she's a bit like lost and she doesn't know where to go next? I don't know. Also, why is it so important for Lorath to finish his book before seeking Nerelle? She clearly isn't doing that well and he knows it. This also solidifies that Mephisto is indeed influencing Nerelle and that next time we see her, she might not be on our side anymore. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate absolutely each one of you. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like. If you loved it, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.